Yes, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's the Sam Livecast. I am Sam. It's... Well, the music just, like, cut. So you know what's funny? What's funny? I usually ride the fader going down on that one, right? Yeah, you wrote it hard this time. And then I, like, twitched at the last minute. <laughs> <laughs> that, like, rarely I was going to say, <laughs> I thought, no, I don't think it ever happens. No. Man, I... I was gonna say, you know, it's I'd funny. Like a terrible DJ. Should we do it again? <laughs> it's it startled me, and I thought like everything went black. Do you or want something. us to bring it down again? <laughs> no. no, yeah, just, just give me a little music. Let me bring it. Up. Okay. Try this. Okay. Lynn, Lynn's got it. There you go. Hey, good evening, everybody. It's the Sam Livecast. I'm Sam, your host, and sometimes cook. Maybe sometimes. That was nice. I, I always, always cook. I don't always, always cook, cook. Sometimes host. I'm, I, don't, I mean, I don't <laughs> just cook the, the whole. That uh, yeah, Lynn's uh, actually got it much better. <laughs> What? What did he say? Always cook, or always cook, sometimes host. <laughs> yes, whatever it is. Hey, if you've never joined us before, this is actually live right now. Uh, we talk food, food stuff, uh, other things that happen in life along the way. I'm here today. This is Shannon. Shannon's on the one camera that moves around. Hang on, wait for it. There she is. Take a step forward, Shannon. There you are. There's Shannon. That's uh, Mrs. Cooking Guy Kelly over there. Answering your Facebook questions while we uh, broadcast live to you. And in the back on the right is Lynn. And, oh, sorry. <laughs> on the right is Max. And on the left is Lynn. I can't hear you. Sorry. Uh-huh, yes. Well, I, our technical problems. It's, no. It's our DJ it's, issues right now, man. Hey, we're okay, just, okay. I just want, yeah. I just wanted to let everybody know that we got an awesome Facebook page. I know you just said that, but head to it right now. Facebook.com slash Sam the Cooking Guy. We yeah, got that's a where, lot of That's where there on. is conversation during the show, which yeah. is an interesting way to watch television. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember, hold on, Shannon, can you throw me the remote? You look nice in that blue shirt, by the way, Max. Which one? Oh, thanks, Mom. <laughs> uh, the, the cable one, the cable box. One. You know, I kind of have a question. Is this yeah. television? It's not technically television, right? I guess no. not, yeah. But it's like television. Well, did I say television? You did. Say, and we, we say television on our website, too. I mean, I look at this like it's TV, essentially, though it's not. But if that those fucking Roku guys would ever get off their ass... Whoa. Uh, was yeah. that too strong? That was too strong. Wait, Max, what happened? Can we just talk about that for a second? I, I, hey, I know. I mean... I, I wish there was something I could do but to you demand did, but, a response to an email, you know? Okay, but we I did have one suggestion that we you didn't have. I know, didn't I know, I know. I need to okay. do that. I'm just okay. trying to figure out a way to fin. Uh, y so yeah. here's the thing. Roku, which we really like, and I shouldn't swear about those guys. I just I feel like they've just dropped off the face of the planet. We're mm -hmm. building a Roku channel for us so that you could literally watch mm -hmm. this on your TV. Roku is another version of Apple TV. I think it could be better because it has other things in it like Hulu which has an ass load of NBC stuff. Yeah, right? exactly. And hey, let me just clarify really quick, though. You can watch our show on your big-ass TV with an Apple TV right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So where's the benefit of the Roku? Oh, the Roku is just, oh, puts <laughs> it in a channel. They were yeah, building a channel so all the episodes and everything would be So there, because right? we host our show through iTunes, that means we're automatically going to be on Apple TV because that is an Apple product. <sighs> My head hurts Roku is different. <laughs> I got it. I think what it comes Can down to is... Sorry about that, dude. No, it's okay. I was just going to say, Finish. you can catch us just about everywhere. Ustream, you know, uh -huh. Stitcher Radio, which I think some people use still. Yeah. <laughs> iTunes, okay. Audio, TV. Oh, like Stitcher that. Radio is awesome. Yeah. Okay. So much more than just our program. Okay, enough. <laughs> okay. And now this, I was just going to say, the, the comparison I was getting, ugh, I don't even want to do it now. Do it. What I was going to say is that at one time, this remote, was promised to have like voting you could watch a show and they would say hey do you want the heroine to jump off the bridge or go into the lake <laughs> and you would be able to push a b or c on this thing and there was some way that that was supposed to happen you're supposed to watch tv and they would they they would ask your uh, take your opinion of certain things a b or c our version of that is go on Sam the Cooking Guy's Facebook and you can ask questions and comment and vote when we put a poll up during the show and talk to other people that are watching. All right, enough. Speaking <sighs> of people that are watching, can I say hi to my sister? Yes. Hi, Auntie Dan. Oh, that's cute. Uh, Auntie Dan's <laughs> All right, Auntie Dan. enough, of the, enough of the commercials and shit. 
We have more important things to talk about. I was in Cabo this past weekend. I went Saturday. I came back today. I got landed at 3.30, two and a half hours ago. It was uh, Zach, uh, Zach, our youngest, who just graduated from high school, four of his friends and two dads. We took the boys. They're coming back tomorrow. I have stuff I have to be here for tomorrow, so I had to come back today. But whose phone was that? I guess it was mine. Sorry. But, you know, you're walking around Cabo, and it's pretty clean. Like, I remember it being way nicer, Kel, than it was when we were there eight, ten years ago. How long ago was it? About that. It was about that. So you're saying you remember it being nicer then? No, I remember it being nicer then ten years ago. Okay. Uh, it's, like, pretty nice. There is still the... the um, uh, panhandling begging component what is that what, what do you what do you, what do you call that um the little kids trying to sell candies chicle oh super sad yeah, chicle, chicle. it's super sad it's just super sad that you see four and five year old kids at one o'clock in the morning yeah one o'clock in the morning that will walk beside you down the street and try and get you to buy their candies were they doing the thing where um you're like sitting at a table at dinner and they run up to the tables I was sitting with uh, David last night while the boys were in a, a club that we didn't want to be in. <laughs> we were just like across the street. And a, and a little kid came up. It was an outdoor place. We were right on the sidewalk. And a little kid came up and he said, started pointing at my bottle of water that I hadn't opened yet. And David speaks fluent Spanish. And I go, what? He goes, he wants your bottle of water. And he, honestly, he was like this big. <laughs> and just big, beautiful brown eyes. And I said, okay, you can take it. And you take it and you scuttled off and... Gave it to, I guess, mom or sister, brother, whatever, that was just down the street and came back and he was out with his candies and stuff. So anyway, it's now 1.30 or so. We're walking down the street and this little boy comes up and he's trying to get me. And if you say yes, I mean, my heart breaks, but if you say yes, you'll have 40 kids there in a second. Mm -hmm. So I don't. I, I try and ignore and not pay attention and think that that will do it and it doesn't do it. And I'm getting the whole... Please, 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 please. Oh, jeez. It's just a brick just pulls at your heart. And finally, Zach is behind me, and Zach says, Dad, just say no. That's He'll get that. So I look down, and I say no. And I keep going. Two steps later, he starts going like this. What? I'm telling you. He was four, five tops growling at me. And I look down and I go, if the sweet face didn't work, the growling and yelling is certainly not going to. Okay? I take a couple steps. He stops and now he goes to Zach, who's right behind me. Mm -hmm. He starts doing the same thing. We stop to discuss what we're doing. Zach looks down and says no. The little kid boots Zach in the shin. No what? way. And turns and walks off. What? No way. Come on. Wow. That's Come on. What did Zachy do? Zachy just went, he just kicked me. I go, who? He goes, the little kid just kicked me. He couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. That was aggressive. <laughs> that was and I know out. it's not, it's not, it's, it's rough, but kicking? <laughs> I can't stay up till 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning like I used to. And I'm feeling a little kicked in the ass for it. Wait. Oh, you guys were out with the kids as they were partying. Yeah, because we kids. wanted to be, we weren't partying with them, really. You just wanted to be kind of. We wanted to be relatively close. Yeah. I mean, because it can, be, it can be dangerous down there. I mean, I didn't really feel like it was, but. No, okay, Dad. In yeah. that club area. Yeah. The clubby area where, yeah. um, you know, everything is. Yeah, at night, that, at where one, Squid Row morning, is and all that little. You can take one block, exactly. You can go one block away from that main area where there's tons of people, and you're and immediately it, in, like, seriously dangerous territory. Well. I mean, I've, I've heard, I've had friends get held up at, uh, like, Knife Point and robbed of everything that they had on oh, there. Oh, that makes me feel really <laughs> comfortable. Okay, he'll be back tomorrow. There. Now there's one father <laughs> protecting them. <laughs> I only have two pictures. I didn't really want to do pictures from the trip. Mm -hmm. Uh... But I have two pictures from coming back on the plane today. Yeah. Hold on, let me get them. Oh, no. Are they well, like they're not bad. The creepy stalker things you get? Well, I don't know. You tell me. This is... So, here's the picture of the guy sitting beside me. What do you reckon? What do you see there? His arm on eczema? your thing. Completely on the armrest. <laughs> Kelly says eczema. Isn't there a better <laughs> like, way to sit in a seat 
that says, hello, neighbor, we're going to be beside each other for two hours. Let's <laughs> each have a little piece of this armrest. Yeah. Look that. at that. I hate that. He had no intention of sharing that effing thing. No. No, he got Can you. we see it again? Yeah. One sec. Sorry. Please don't take that away. Look at that. So wow. the point is, ladies and gentlemen, find a way to sit when you don't have to do that. And There's, he needs lotion. And he did. And he does. <laughs> There's an equilibrium that you have to reach. You got to learn yeah, to share true. it with the person. Somebody, this is in my experience. This is how I've been successful. One person goes back. One person goes front. Yeah. Well, he wasn't into that. <laughs> um, so they, they make this announcement and the, the, the flight attendant that gave the whole speech about seat belts and the, Things coming down mm -hmm. and bathrooms and no smoking and all that. She says, when you're crossing international boundaries, it's actually uh, like a law that the civilians, us civilians in the back, cannot use the first class bathroom. What? You ever heard that before? It's mm -hmm. a law? You ever heard anybody say <laughs> no. it's like international law? I can't remember the word she used. You cannot... I respectively request, but it's also in law. You cannot use the front bathroom. And she talked to us like we were freaking two-year-olds. How does uh, that? I, I wanted to say to her on the way out, can I just tell you something? I'm not one. <laughs> you can use a big girl voice. You don't have to use that condescending effing tone. Mm -hmm. And don't do this. And then... This will come out of here, take the mask and use the white elastic and put it around the back of your head. The bag, even though it doesn't inflate, will be passing oxygen through to the mask. It was stupid. <laughs> I didn't like that. I think air travel will be providing entertaining content forever. Ugh. Forever. So, so here's, here's my... Okay, just take a look at my... My table. Here's my table. Let's just analyze <laughs> what I got. And then I'll tell you why this is such that, an amazing picture. That's your table? Yeah, it's not a lot of room. Bloody I, would I chose to get the Angus hamburger on the plane. What is wrong with you? And I was in row, I was starving. I was in row 11. I was convinced by the time they got three quarters of the way back, they weren't going to have hamburgers for anybody else. Wait, that was a, like a standard meal? Yeah, well, on a on a what what airline? I'd say on Alaska, the, the two drinks. On Alaska, <laughs> two bloody well, minus the two, uh, yeah. <laughs> two bloody marys. <laughs> Here's what I did to make that actually a, a, not a bad burger. Blow it up for a second. I took the relish, that's the that's right beside the bloody marys. Yeah, and the mayonnaise that's two over from the bloody marys. Mm -hmm. Put them on the burger, and then all the way to the right, the Tim's potato chips. Yep. inside the bun. Mm. That was good. I'm sure. I that, love Tim. I don't. I really, really don't good. know Tim's if I've ever chips. seen you order a burger. Well, I normally. I've never known you could get one on a plane. I know. Oh, can I also point something out? Yeah. But yeah. Did you really need to order two Bloody Marys at one time? <laughs> my sister you actually just you wrote couldn't that have had them <laughs> consecutively. Here's the. Here's the thing. I know I'm gonna want a second one. <laughs> I know yeah. if I wait for the cart to pass me in row eleven. That's, you have a point. By the time it goes all the way back to 33 or whatever it is, mm -hmm. and then they park it, and then they're walking up and down the aisle, I'm going to have to do it a second time. But I have to whip my credit card out a second time. Is the second drink not going to be a little bit watered down? No, that's why you get two ices, and you drink them quickly. <laughs> you drink them quickly. There you go. You shot Glenn. No Glenn. wonder you're feeling it. <laughs> uh, okay, but the really amazing part about this whole thing mm -hmm. is that... Um, while I'm eating a bad hamburger, 35,000 feet in the air, I'm watching the movie about El Bulli. Oh, you're arguably, that. arguably the greatest restaurant in the world. How is it? I'm not finished yet. Okay. It's, it's very good. It's a little bit slow to start. They close for six, well, they're closed now permanently. But did you know they close for six months a year, Lynn, to work on their new menu? Mm. If I say yes, you'll be like, of course you knew that. If did, I say no, then... Did you know that? I didn't know that. Yeah, I didn't know that until today. It's really fascinating. really, And they totally moved the location. So they don't do it at the restaurant. Was that... They a, go to a, like a lab in Barcelona someplace. Yeah, he has multiple locations. And his yeah. house is like a 
just filled with documents. It's crazy. It's really fascinating. Um, uh, sorry, remember I yeah. I speak for the people who don't who aren't necessarily foodies. Yeah. Um, El Bulli. Well, I just said arguably the most famous I, restaurant so in the world. I, can you Closed. Go? It's in Spain. The chef who's on the right, his name is Ferran Adria. Uh huh. I want to say that he was one of the first guys to use molecular gastronomy in his cooking. Mm -hmm. But it's so much more than that. It's not about chemistry. It's about making food amazing by presenting in a way that you would never think. Lynn, does that help? Yeah, I think he, he's a great thinker outside the box. That's yeah, just yeah. who he is. Can we maybe see a couple of pictures of dishes? Yeah, if you want. Awesome. Lynn will look, look, yeah. look for a couple. Oh, of course, yeah. And then the only other thing about the airplane that pissed me off... Mm -hmm. Uh, was I go to the use the bathroom, and what do I find in there? Oh, do I you find want to know? No, 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 it's not oh, gross. Okay. I didn't like that. Oh, okay. I find the toilet seat up, yeah. but sandwiched between the toilet seats and the toilet seat lid is one of those seat covers. Yeah. Like the person went in, put the toilet seat liner on, used the toilet, put the lid up, and then left. <laughs> So now the seat is up with the toilet seat liner there. And now I'm faced with a decision of what do I do? If I leave it just like that, and I only have to pee, so I didn't have to sit down or anything. Which, by the way, I would never sit down on an airplane and do what you have to do when you do that. No way. It ain't happening. I don't care how bad my stomach would be. I'm not doing that. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm not doing that in the plane. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. There's no room do you remember for that. There are, do you remember our 10-hour flight to Fiji? Yeah. You're saying that you... I didn't. You're, uh, you're saying no. that... through our, How about our 14-hour one to Hong Kong? Hey, work. I worked at Ontogen. You were just chilling up there in first class and not using the restroom? I, business class. Business. I worked at Ontogen for eight years. Yeah. I never once went number two there. You're like Jordan. Jordan does the same thing. He refuses to I go. I want my or, home. I think Zach is the same. I'm not going anywhere either. I barely go into a public restroom period to go pee. Right. I don't even Apparently. go. Okay, so By the way, so here's the thing. You got to do what you got to so do. So you're on an airplane and you want to do that and then open the door and there's somebody standing right there looking at you? <laughs> yeah, that's terribly embarrassing. I, was, I felt bad enough looking at this, this toilet seat cover <laughs> that the next person in would go, oh, that guy didn't have the courtesy to flush his own toilet seat cover. So now I have to get the paper towels oh. and pull off their toilet seat oh. tissue thing and throw it in the thing and flush the toilet. Just because I don't want people thinking I'm that guy. So if I'm not going to want people thinking that, there's no way I'm sitting down and doing that business in an airline bath, in an airplane bathroom. Thank you very much. Hey, I got to mm. agree with you that it's not the most ideal situation. Not the most ideal. <laughs> but I, 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 think it's, I think it's preferable to sitting uncomfortable on a plane for hours and hours and no, hours. No, dude, here's the thing. You train your body not to have to go <laughs> oh. in that situation. I'm oh, sure. You're, you're right. You're, so your mental psychosis has trained your body throughout the years. <laughs> there was a series of movies years ago called uh, Flint. Our man Flint, in like Flint. Mm -hmm. And the actor was a guy named James Coburn. You know who James Coburn is? He's mm -hmm. a great old school actor. It's kind of a James Bond-esque type movie. And he trained himself to stop his heart when he slept. It put him <laughs> in a super restful state, right? <laughs> and he had this watch. I don't know if you can see this. Imagine that if I had a watch on here and it was time to wake up, this little... T would come out of the watch and it would start doing this. Thereby starting his heart going again by pushing on his, his pulse point on his wrist. Could you imagine? He trained himself. He trained his heart to slow way down so he could super rest. It's not difficult to imagine that I've trained myself <laughs> not to have to go number okay. two when I'm in that kind of situation. Our man Flint, dude. Our man Flint is a movie. Yeah, and in like Flint. Yeah, your real life. Dude. Oh, I see what you're saying, Lynn. It's a movie. I'm just saying, people do these things. <laughs> Eventually, it's gonna get you're you like real Costanza. bad one day, man. Remember the the <laughs> Seinfeld remake in when they did re, when they remade the show in in Curb Your Enthusiasm though. Yeah. And one of Costanza's <laughs> new thing in this new, uh, this like, you know, reunion of Seinfeld was that he got rich off of creating the app, the eye toilet, <laughs> which is a, an application that directs you to the nearest, cleanest, safest toilet anywhere in New York City. 
Because there was that episode on the real Seinfeld. Yeah. With Jerry and George, and Jerry yep. would say, uh, 49th and 5th. And George would go, the, uh, <laughs> the Mary Sherman Museum. Yeah. Downstairs, round back, ask for Nancy. Yeah. Give her my name. She'll give you the key. It was amazing. And then he had his handicapped toilet, too, remember, <laughs> no, in, in his did. office? That was a huge <laughs> recurring they found, thing. Yeah, they found out he wasn't handicapped, and <laughs> they tried to force him out. <laughs> Suzanne writes, uh, great shows this week. One thing is a sidebar, Max. Take advantage of the three men you were fortunate enough to work with and be related to. Uh, Steve's not here, but Steve Lynn and your dad can teach you a few things if you would just listen. Ooh, My dad wow. always told me, you can't learn anything if you don't listen. Have a great weekend. <laughs> who wrote that? <laughs> Suzanne. Suzanne. Can who? you believe? I, I don't have a last name. <laughs> I don't What's read last I names. I'm, <sighs> You're not, hmm. I'm, not, I'm not making that up. Hmm. Humana, humana, I, why would I make that up? You want to see that? I didn't say you made it up. What are you saying then? I'm just, no, I'm not saying anything anymore now. (laughs) Oh. I think you are saying something. It's New Product Monday, and I have something really special here. Really special, but let me get this. This is about to solve a ridiculous amount of problems. Well, one huge problem (laughs) that's been around apparently a very long time, and somebody decided... It needed fixing, and it's been fixed. <clears throat> you ready for this? Sure. Right, I'm going right here. Tell me when you're short, when you're on, and I'll spin it around. Okay. It's the, ready, Max? Mm-hmm. It's the mom-invented Good Bites crustless sandwich cutter. <laughs> yeah. What? Because apparently cutting the crusts off of bread has been a legitimate problem for people. <laughs> so just let me show you what this is. Here, it removes crusts. Uh-huh. It slices sandwiches. Child-friendly, dishwasher safe. It's great for parties and finger sandwiches and, <laughs> and catering. But why? And it seals the edges. But why? Jeez, why? Lynn, how do you not get this? I don't get it. And by the way, it was mom invented. Well, you know, I get it. If it's like, like a couple bucks. It was two ninety nine, huh? and as if you can't get what's going on here, because I think right now as I see this, I have a pretty good idea of what I'm supposed to do. There's six instruction points on the back. Oh gosh, how to use it? Start with your prepared sandwich. Mm-hmm. Center the sandwich cutter on the sandwich. Yes. Look at Haley came right on over. <laughs> Apply even pressure. Crust easily separates from the bread. Crust easily separates from the bread. (laughs) Remove sandwich, cutter, and sandwich ends are sealed. And what's in that sandwich? Well, I didn't have anything. (laughs) But if there was, it would be sealed. And there it is. But hey, that's pop. Like, remember, do you have crustables in your freezer for your kids? We did have crustables. No, we didn't. We didn't. Really buy them for our kids? You buy them for yourself. I think we bought them once as a lark now. Oh. Who do I know that likes eating frozen? Is that Mark? Mark. Crustables are those frozen peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. For Crustables are frozen peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. They're pretty darn good. You know what? Here, Tamara Monosoff is the founder. Really? And by the way, this is not a toy, and there's adult supervision required with this. <laughs> How is that possible? That somebody would actually get this to market? Well, look, I bought one. That's true. All it takes is people even buying them as a lark. And that just kind of, you know, I've yeah. never heard that phrase. Lark? Yeah. As a lark. What? It's like a, like a gag gift or like just kind I of just like did it as a lark. novelty. No, no. Yes. Well. I'm confused with all your Canadian phrases, dude. No, it's sort of, yes. It doesn't really mean novelty. means more like a, on a whim, okay. on a lark. Got it. I bought it on a whim because I thought it was ridiculous. Is that not, not the way that it should be? No, I'm, I'm actually more kind of wondering how much this lady is making off that product. <laughs> well, if that thing, I, I can't imagine. People are buying a stupid thing like that. Honestly, I've had that a couple of years sitting around the house. Mm-hmm. I've never thought about using it for anything. I don't really know why I bought it. I guess I bought it to make fun of it at some point, but, but now we have it. So, Aren't you making a sandwich tonight? 
I am making a sandwich, but not that kind. What's going on here with the dog? <laughs> he has our undivided attention for some reason. Today's National Strawberry Parfait Day. Hi, baby. National Strawberry Parfait Day. And I'm not making a strawberry parfait, mm -hmm. uh, but I'm making something with strawberries that I thought would be a good little extra tip. I'm also making this sandwich that I had in, in Cabo yesterday. It's a chorizo sandwich Ooh. that was so damn good and so simple looking that I had to say I'm come back to make it today because I wanted to have it. We ate, I ate it, and I and Zach had some bites, and a couple other people. And Zach said that's definitely got to be on the menu from now on. And then I said this is not a problem. I'll probably make it tomorrow in the live cast. And now here's the way I'm going to do that. So I think I should probably jump in the kitchen and start while I'm starting to do the, the sandwich. I can be doing the strawberry thing too. Is that cool? Let's do that. Shannon, oh, Shannon's not ready. She was just getting ready to blow her nose. Shannon is sick. I was silently blowing my nose. Did, we, did you just blow your nose quietly? No, I just wiped my nose. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say that's she gross. She her nose. I was going to go, that's kind of gross. We don't need to know that. But I have now spent five, ten minutes yes. talking about going number two on an airplane. So <laughs> I'd like to know this. Can we just put a poll? All right. Just one of the, an actual poll so they just, we get the percentages? Sure. Let's this is this, this simple. Um... Do you go number two on an airplane? No, you got to hit the poll thing, yeah? Yeah. Really, Okay. Sir? Is that the way to, answer, to ask it? Yeah. Do you go number two on an airplane? Add option, yes. Yes? Oh. Okay. Or no? Option. No. Right. And I'm curious. Facebook.com slash Sam the cooking guy. I'm curious. How many really? people do? All right. We'll see. I mean, there's a lot of people going in the bathroom, but are they really doing that? I hate though when you ask questions about I suppose it. you know what a third option would have been only in an emergency okay I'll add that right now can you still do that mm -hmm. okay <laughs> but we're gonna read this while we're cooking okay ready <laughs> I'm ready All right, let's do it. Haley's ready let's go cook something <laughs> all right so this chorizo sandwich is gonna start with chorizo. And when I use chorizo, I use the Mexican chorizo, which is like ground beef, as opposed to the Spanish chorizo, which Lynn is? Ground pork. Uh, no. It's like, a, it's like sausage already cooked. Smoked. Oh, it is. Yeah. You actually got me though, I didn't know that. Do you know that you're 22, only 22 likes away from 25? Thousand. Oh, already? Nice. Yeah. Please like me. Wow. Please like me. So Morse. like Sam the Cooking Guy on Facebook? Please like him. Let's get 22 by the time we're done. Okay, so look at uh, here's what Here's what it looks like. Right? It looks like ground beef, right? So what we're going to do is we're just going to pop it in the pan right here. Come, Shan. It's fully uncooked. Light ground beef, light ground turkey, light ground chicken. Well, wow, that's really red. Why is that so red? And the, look at the look at the TV. Look at the shot on the screen. It was super red. So, the prob the only problem with this is that you see the color now. Look, Shannon, look at the color on the TV. Because the lights over here are a different color temperature than the lights out there. Oh, it makes it okay. Look the only real problem with chorizo is that unlike ground beef that starts out red and ends up gray, or turkey that starts out whatever that color is and ends up kind of white, it doesn't really change color a lot. So you kind of have to give it enough time. And we're just going to move it around. You're going to see how it's going to start to look. The same time I'm doing this, I have to make like a really, really basic form of guacamole, which I'm going to do. And my choice for um, avocados at the supermarket today was not very good. Let's be kind of cool. So bright red and bright green. Yeah, well, just wait. Just wait, young no, I'm man. One. I'm, just I'm hungry, wait. Man. Just wait. What else did you eat in Cabo? 
I had a Caesar salad last night. When was the last time anybody had a Caesar salad made table side? Yeah, no, that no, must have been never. yummy. Oh my God. Kel, I'm telling you. Yeah. They start with, with anchovies, garlic, mixing it in the bowl. They add a raw egg yolk to thicken it. Dijon, red wine vinegar, little oil. This was so good. Maybe the best. Wow, it's hurting my hand. Maybe the best Caesar salad I've ever had. Really? Yeah. Made table side. It's an art. This guy was a master. They say the Caesar salad was invented in TJ. Do you know that? I don't yeah. believe that. This is a perfect avocado. I thought it was too soft in the store. But check this out. When you look here, see how much give there is? I thought it was too soft. This is, I'm very happy with this. Is Max still there? He's still here. Yeah, I'm here. Mm -hmm. Okay. He's just so quiet. You haven't taken Susan's comments to heart, Max, have you? No. He goes, no. <laughs> just doing my job. Okay. So this is very simple. I don't want to be, I don't know what their avocado, what their guac was. But I'm gonna make it basic because that's pretty much how it tasted to me. So I'm gonna add some lime juice to this and some salt. See, look, still that color. It smells good. It's going to be great. Little salt in here. Because we know salted avocado will taste more like avocado than unsalted avocado. I know it seems weird, but salt makes everything taste more like what it's supposed to taste like. OK, so a little. Oh my gosh, use a wooden spoon, sir. Oh, yes. Is it noisy? <laughs> well, I mean, Max and I got headphones back here, so we're probably a little more sensitive. But you know what? I can't find my... How's that? <laughs> That's so much better. Is it better? <laughs> I'm surprised you can't hear it in your own ears. No, because I have my mic turned down. My oh, okay. earpiece turned down a little bit. Sam, you have a 15-year-old fan. Hello, 15-year-old fan. And her name is Sam. Really? A girl, Sam. Hey, we got bought uh, drinks. David and I got drinks bought for us the other night because of a Sam the Cooking Guy fan. Really? In Cabo, yeah, yeah. Wait, in Cabo? That was really nice, yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Okay, so here you go. Basic, like, I don't even know if this would pass for actual guacamole, but it's got lots of flavor. So this is getting there. We're getting pretty close. So, what you need to do this properly, which I can't do, is the Mexican torta, that really nice, fresh little roll thing. So I bought one of these um, chivada rolls, which is going to be super good to do it with still. Can Let me you turn the broiler on. Can you get tortas anywhere, like in a store? Yeah, you can. You just have to go to the right you know, Mexican market here. Nice. Do you want to know the results of your poll so far? Yes. Oh, tell me how many people have voted so far. You know, there has been a lot, but someone on Facebook did say that thanks to Timeline and all its features, all your friends will know what you voted for. Oh, they will? <laughs> yeah. I was already looking at well, that. Well, I told people that I won't. Oh, so if, oh, I get it. So people are, they're a little scared. How many people have voted? Most people, you have about two to one ratio of no to yes. And then, or no to yes to only an emergency. And then one guy wrote, I pretend I'm a World War II bomber over Berlin, bombs away. Okay, wait Oh, a God. I didn't, I didn't need to know that. <laughs> and your son, Jordan, wrote, hell yes, <laughs> basically. I thought Max said he wouldn't. All right. So we're doing fine here. So here's what we're going to do. While this is finishing cooking, I'm going to put this on the heat. I want to get both sides of this the bread, just with a little color on them. We're doing uh, two things. 
not related at all, but still really good. One is this little chorizo sandwich that we're making. And the other one is what we're going to do with these frozen, now almost thawed uh, strawberries. We're making the world's simplest little strawberry sauce. Oh. This is in uh, cookbook number three, Just Grill This. It consists of just the following items. Strawberries and the little juice that comes off them as they've defrosted. Interesting. Some lemon juice. Just for a little tartness. And a little sugar. Like two tablespoons. I know it looks like a lot. <laughs> it comes out a lot. It doesn't, it's not really a lot. You know what the best fair exhibit is? What? We have the San Diego Fair going on, right? It's the Vitamix. It's always fun to watch, right? And they always have, like, you can always eat there and stuff. Just makes you really want to buy the machine. Right. One, two, three. Okay. We're going to go a little bit backwards. We'll go dessert first. That looks cool, right? That looks great. Just let it go until it's smoothly doing its thing in there. <laughs> I know, I'm quiet. I like looking at this. Okay, it's perfect. That's done. This is done. Let's see how my bread's done. Warm on that side. We'll give it a backside, this a little bit. We've got this, I've got the cheese. I need one of these things. As I do this, let me talk about Fixtures Living. We love them as a, an advertiser. They're starting to do an amazing thing with countertops in there. You haven't been able to buy countertops. You've been able to go in and buy ovens and, and sinks and faucets and this faucet is sold at Fixtures Living. You don't have to have the brush version. It's made by Waterstone. It's the only all American made faucets. All the other ones come from other countries. And I'm not saying there's, other, there's anything wrong with other countries. I'm just saying, hey, if you've got a chance to buy something as badass as this fa faucet, and it comes from this country, I don't know why you wouldn't. This right here is seatbelt technology. I love these people. <laughs> Look how good that is. I love it. I love my faucet. I love it and I love the Waterstone people. Anyway, here's the point I'm trying to make. Fixtures Living, uh, Kitchen Bath Outdoor, All Things Amazing is now about to be in the business of, ow, oh, countertops. You'll be able to go in and see amazing, amazing countertop selection. You have to do that. I'm just telling you about that. They're online at fixtureslivingcom You can go to their Facebook page. Facebook.com forward slash fixtures living. Like them. They'll send you not annoying stuff. I do stuff there. You can win contests and come and have fun with me and we'll do private junk and wait, that sounded kind of bad. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but it's, it'll be a great time. But you can only do that if you become a friend of theirs on Facebook. They'll tell you about good things that are coming up. Mm. All right. They're in San Diego, Rancho Mirage, and Costa Mesa, which is up by Los Angeles. Okay. Here's this trezo, right? Oh my God. What else is going on that besides? Okay, wait. This is exactly how it looked. And now, this. Monterey Jack cheese. Mm. Okay, now it goes under the broiler. While that happens, let me just do the perfect thing with this. When am I going to put this in? Let me just see here, Lynn. Let me just see. Because I know you're going to want on something pretty, but <laughs> I can't do everything. I'll just have to do it on this. And you can choose what you want. Here's the key to this. And remember, it's uh, National Strawberry Parfait Day. We're not doing that. So I have no idea how people come up with that. Neither do I. 
but all we care about is this. This is a couple perfect little bites of ice cream. My theory is a little dessert is good. You don't need a lot. This, and now watch. Mmm. Oh, this is gonna be really good. I mean, of course, there's other stuff that you could put on here. Oh, that's a chorizo spoon. I don't want that. <laughs> Wait, and I don't also want to burn this. 30 more seconds. No. This one. You could put mint in this. Oh my God. A little tart, a little bit sweet, but all good. And don't be scared of frozen fruit. Frozen fruit, oh my God. I'm not a dessert fan, but that thing is super good. Right, check this guy out. Okay, you know what frozen fruit is? Look at me. Frozen fruit is fruit that's been picked and frozen quickly right away. Flash at the, frozen. At the height of freshness. That's all it is. If you can't always have strawberries around, this is an amazing, simple little easy dessert you can do last minute. But so now we're gonna take a little bit of this guac, put on here, this is exactly how this sandwich came. But not with the melted cheese on top like that, but that's okay. And now this. Wow. Look at that. Look at the green, holy crap. Wow, that looks yummy. You would, you would eat this? Looks really, really good. That means good. you're super hungry right now. <laughs> All right, I'm going to have a bite. Okay, I'm just going to tell you, and I'm not blowing my own horn, but this thing is as good as it was yesterday in Cabo. It's so delicious. All right. The live cast is that simple. We make things live, simple, so that you can watch and say, oh, he's doing it right there and he's trying to talk and he's figuring it out. You can do all this stuff at home yourself. That's good news. Bad news, we're not gonna be here Wednesday or Thursday night. Ugh. We can't be here this week, sorry boys. We will uh, see you next Monday night, brand new show, with a very fun, um, um, New product Monday's item that I think you're going to like, as opposed to the one tonight when nobody liked it because <laughs> it was stupid. All right. Have a good rest of the week. We'll see you next Monday.